So grateful that you're here. In fact, some of you have rallied friends and you are meeting in churches. You have gathered college friends and you are meeting on campuses. And we are so grateful. And I know you will not regret spending the next 45 minutes with us. And what's going to happen next is we are about to view some of the interviews that we gathered while we were there on Monday. So a little backstory. I saw the gatherings going on and on about hour 36. If you don't know, we are looking at now at day nine of, of Asbury students and people from around the world gathered in their little bitty chapel in Wilmore, Kentucky. And at hour 36, I got real curious. I thought, what is happening? And one reason I got so curious is because I have seen something rather magical in Gen Z. And I know everybody is, is wondering about you guys. A lot of you are watching right now. And and thinking, you know, what, what's going to happen with the generation that has been raised with tech and, and who are you and, and who are you going to show, show up and be in the world? And, and I have just had this feeling about you before you, you were even named. I remember in 2018, I was speaking at Breakaway, which is a Texas A&M ministry, and many of you were at the end confessing sin and it wouldn't end. And then the same thing happened again a few months later at Baylor. And then passion happened and, and a stadium full of you were confessing sin. And I've just seen this desire and this hunger and this disregard for, for appearances. You, you want God and you're desperate. And I know for many of you that are watching, there's a desperation just out of the depression and anxiety that is plaguing your generation, the hardships that you have faced already at such a young age. And, and so we all are watching this and we're praying for you and we're watching as the numbers come out and so many of you are, are not you know, in the church and, and connected to any religion, but I've just seen these sparks popping up in you. And so when I saw our, our 36 at Asbury, I started praying and I was like, Lord, is this the beginning, and I know this is a big statement, of this generation coming to you? 
because you all are hungry. I, I feel it every time I'm with you. There's this hunger in you that, that you, you want something more and you want something real. And guys, what you're going to see tonight, it's as real as it gets. I mean, it is, it's, it's so simple. What's been happening at Asbury, it is beautiful. There's nothing fancy. I couldn't believe how low tech it was. I, I arrive and I walk in the back of the room and I'm sitting in the back little corner and it's just, it's so simple. And people, some of them are standing, some of them are sitting, some of them are raising their hands, but, but nobody is there except for God because there was no show, there was no program, nobody's in charge of this. It all started because a chapel that even the speaker himself would say was unremarkable went a little long and, and students stayed to pray, 15 of them. And before they knew it, as you'll hear, hundreds were filling the chapel for unexplained reasons and they've not left. So we are on day nine. And what you're about to see and hear are the stories of the people that were in the room, the stories of the worship leader who, who was leading and <laughs> leading and leading and the president of the school and the leadership decisions he's had to make. And you're gonna hear from so many students and individuals that are just showing up and, and in the room. And, and guys, here's, here's what, I, what I pray. At a minimum, you are wildly encouraged at a minimum that you know that God is still moving, that, that the church is not dying, the church is flowing, that, that we're going to see this generation do unbelievable things for the kingdom. I believe that with every ounce of me. And I also hope and pray that this would spread. because we're just here for a little while and our minute on earth is pretty dark right now. It just feels dark. It feels dark everywhere. And I know so many of you, including in my own home and, and myself even recently, have been struggling with, with so many different things, anxiety, depression. So many of you have confessed suicidal ideation to me and, and pornography and abuse and it just feels like it keeps getting piled on. I mean, I'm thinking of Turkey and Syria right now and those families that have lost loved ones and the hell that they're living in. I mean, it's just dark. And I've just kind of been this naive person that believes like, I know this is crazy, but I just have always believed that as a generation, we could give our lives to God, like we could, we could, we could do this in such a way with reckless abandon that, that we lived as if heaven was real. And so when you taste it, when you see people doing it out of just sheer God moved and, and therefore I wanna give my life to him, you just can't get enough of it. So without further ado, I want you to know my friends, Luke Lefevre and Daniel McLeod, join me. I wasn't going to do this without Gen Z. Um, in fact, I didn't even consider going until Luke called me and said, Jenny, I think we need to tell the stories there. And as soon as they called, because they are in that generation, I said, I got you. We're going. Let's go. And so we decided it on Sunday afternoon, and we were there in the room by midnight that day. And gosh, um, just wait. You'll love it. Here we go. To you from Asbury Chapel. And what I want you to know is we believe that this is a special moment. We're not defining what it's gonna become. We just believe that this is unique in, this, in the fact that God is moving here. <laughs> Here's what I know is we wanna bring you here with us. Yeah. We wanna tell the stories that are happening here. We don't know what comes of this, but I know that one thing God has called me to do with the platform that he's given me to steward is to tell the stories of the church, what is happening, in the church because I think we get so discouraged and we put our head down and we see what's right in front of us and the brokenness and, and all that's real. All of that is real. We have it in our life right now. But every once in a while you get a glimpse of what God is doing at different parts of the earth and, and faith wells up and hope wells up and especially, especially for me when I get around their generation because 
here's the deal. We were just talking about this. It is not cool to love God yeah. in your 20s anymore. Yeah. Like y'all are not cultural Christians. And so those of you that love God, in my experience, love God. And there also is in you, I've seen, a desire to see repentance. Yeah. And, and so that is what you preach all yeah. the time. Yeah. Talk about that specific thing and even just what we've heard since we've been on campus here. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things that they've been talking about is just this repentance. And one of the things that they said I thought was so interesting was it's a repentance without condemnation, mm -hmm. but it's this conviction from the Holy Spirit. And I feel like something that God so wants to do in our generation is get back the idea that for so many of us, I think we think that holiness is like this legalistic straight jacket that it's just this dead, lifeless thing. But what Jesus calls us into holiness, I love what Hebrews says, where it says, pursue holiness, for without it, no man will see God. And it's, it, that's what it feels like is going on here. If people yeah. are coming like, I, I'm, I'm repenting and I'm, I'm, I'm confessing sin and I'm turning from sin, not because I feel like, oh, I just need to be a better person or something like that, but they're going, I'm hungry to see God in a way I've never seen God before. George, you were there yes. from the beginning. You yes. were leading when yes. this kind of broke out. Talk about just what that was like. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Um, in some ways, it was um, a very normal time. Yeah. You know, uh, right after the sermon, we did an altar call, and I just kind of was playing to music and, and led worship for a bit as people were responding uh, and becoming Jesus's friend, and. Uh, Ten hours later, <laughs> I look up and the room was packed, and it was Were you just reading wild. That whole day, that whole first day. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, George. Yeah. Are you tired? <laughs> a little bit, but honestly, um, I, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm made to do this, and it's just been such a joy. Um, it reminds me of what Jesus said when he said, it, it, "My food is to do the will of the Father." You know, um, and I feel so nourished by watching people encounter God in such fresh and real ways. Yeah. It's been a very sweet, sweet time, uh, very tender. The past five days has been glorious um, and very special, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I make it a point to not only be aware of what the Holy Spirit is doing in the room, but also the people. Um, you know, I, every student that I've met, I've made it a point to remember their names and get a sense of their mm -hmm. stories. Um, and every time I've been just so moved by the hunger, the flame that's already inside of them. And so um, in some ways I'm kind of not surprised that God would move in such a special way um, because a lot of the flame was already kindled in their hearts. Yeah. And, um, and we were just all together in one space and I think the fire began to spread. and. Um, and so as much as I've, I've been listening to the Holy Spirit, I think a key part of this has been listening to the stories of the students and connecting with them relationally. Because um, I, I think a number of them um, have either bumped into me at, at some point in time. And I think a key part of God moving is unity um, and authentic relationships. And I think a lot of what started this and kindled this was friends getting together, loving on Jesus mm. together. Um, and familiar faces um, and relationship built. You were in the 15 that stayed. Yes. Like you, you, you were there, yeah. chapel ended. Tell everybody what happened. Yeah, so I was just there. Um, my class had actually gotten canceled this past week at 11, so I was like, I'll just like stay or whatever. Um, and like I've heard a lot of people say like they didn't even expect this to happen at all, and I really didn't expect this to happen at all. Um, but yeah, I was just praying, um, just in reality, like there was just a lot going on in my heart, um, just a lot of like sin and like things that I was just praying about at that time. Um, and then just other people were just staying and worshiping and then, um, it kind of like just turned into more worship and more people coming later. Um, yeah, so it was crazy and it was not anything that we expected. So Lexi, let's just talk about what you've seen over yeah. the last few days. You've been charged with a hard task to tell the story. <laughs> yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. I was supposed to go to class on Wednesday. I had the full intention of going to class on Wednesday. I put my backpack in the room, 
But then what happened was I had come to these bathrooms at the back at the basement of Hughes, and I just heard them continuing to sing, and I was like, that's a little strange. Like, why are they still going? It's like 11 now. And then, <laughs> and then I just felt literally like the Lord told me, like, go back upstairs. And I did, and there was about, I would say, less than 30 people just talking and pray, uh, talking to each other, praying for each other, and then worshiping God, like, unlike in a way I've never seen. And I just, like, for the first time, like, I felt like the Holy Spirit. I mean, I was so curious almost immediately of leadership and how do you decide what to do? So let's go back to the moment, first moment that you heard or realized something's going on, mm -hmm. different. Yeah, so I, uh, I was streaming this in my office when it was happening. My wife was here and uh, so we, we stream our chapels and um, it, I, I say this descriptively, this is not a statement about the speaker or anything. It was an unremarkable chapel. It was an ordinary chapel. And at the very end, we had a gospel choir come up and sing, and they do a great job. And about an hour later, around noon, my wife texted me. She said, you need to come back here. There are still students worshiping, praying in chapel. And so I did. <laughs> what do you think then? Oh, I just thought, this is beautiful. This is great. Uh, this is It'll end soon. Yeah, uh, unscripted. Um, and then more came and more came. and. I'll tell you, the, the metaphor, I've shared this with a lot of people, probably around 2 p.m., we determined, you know, we should probably invite our campus to this. And so my office is over there. I went, I sent an email. Hey, just want to, people are still there. This is great. This is lovely. Yeah. Uh, you have an invitation to come. As I was walking back from my office, about, a student about 100 yards in front of me was sprinting <gasps> up the stairs uh. into Hughes. And... Uh. I said later that evening or that week, I just said, that is the picture, that's the image that I would want for every one of our students. You are running towards it. You're running towards the cross. You're running towards Jesus. And so that was kind of how the day started and it just grew and grew. Honestly, revival has been something that we've been praying for for a really, really long time. Um, and so when I heard that chapel never ended on Wednesday, um, as soon as I was free, I was like, I gotta be there. I don't know, a lot of the thoughts when it was like first happening was like, a lot of people were really skeptical. A lot of people were like, is this really revival? Is this really what we've been praying for? Um, and a lot of people were like, really weary of, of like calling it that too early. Um, but then just as it's gone on, I think it's just like, it's so evident that God is doing something so unique and so special that it's like, we can't just say like, oh, it's an extra long worship service. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's truly like, it's so evident that the spirit is here and moving in like a specific way. It's genuine. Yeah. It's not, it's not pretend. It's yeah. not, this place is infused with the spirit of God. Yeah. It is not fake. It is yeah. not pretend. It is generations of yeah. his spirit living in this room. Yeah. And it comes out and when it does, it comes out in a power. Yeah. Wow. I, agree with I, that. I knelt at the altar right up here during that revival in the 50s and I had an experience that I can't I can't relate I mean I can't wow. tell you uh, I felt like a little cloud came and enveloped, enveloped me and I couldn't even move it's, other than it was the Holy Spirit I don't know what it was there's a real palpable hunger for God yeah. that isn't fabricated, it isn't manufactured, it isn't, you know, blessing you for the sake of me having, you know, a prosperous life or whatever. People want God. Yeah. And I think that's the sign of a true revival. When we, when humans can finally realize what we're really made for and go after it. Yeah. We're made for God and when we pursue Him, He pursues us. I was thinking about, um, you know, if, if we draw near to Him, He'll draw near to us. And so this is us drawing near to Him and He's been totally drawing near to yeah. us. opening this morning that I was privy to and and just knowing that the world's watching you guys right now and and it was so humble talk a little bit about those statements this morning 
and yeah. and specifically the ones to the cynic that feels like oh, is this real what's happening yeah here? yeah i did want to frame here's what's been happening on our campus so in addition to just meeting for 120 plus hours i I wanted people to know, I, I thought of James 3 and godly wisdom and those attributes that are mentioned, that this is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, mm. full of good fruits, no impartiality, no hypocrisy. That's been the spirit. It's just been really, really sweet. And I think that we, we've received this question, is this the 1970 revival? And we've really resisted like these comparisons yeah. because I know there are people in this community and other communities that have been um, the recipient of attempts to maybe recreate a revival in a way that they experienced as spiritual manipulation or other pain and hurt from organized religion or Christianity yeah. and that's a real thing and so I just wanted to say uh, to those voices that are either sitting in the room or, or tuning in to say, look, I get it. I, yeah. I get the skepticism that you might be feeling, but um, my experience and the experience of others has just been that this has been a really blessed, sweet place, just radical expressions of humility um, from students, from staff and faculty, from visitors compassion. I've just seen things that have just absolutely broken my heart. Wow. Um, I mentioned this morning a student that just looked out to everyone and cried out, I'm a ghost, I'm not seen. And to hear just other students in that generation yeah. from throughout the auditorium say, I see you. Mm. you know, it's really moving. And to see parents and community members descend upon this person, we see you. You've really studied revival. I've been taught by many um, wonderful professors at the seminary well, and uh, hear about it. Yes. I think it's important that we just start with what it is. From, mm. from your study and, and looking back at what later would be termed a revival for generations, what, yeah. what would you say a revival is? Well, my, um, my professors and those that I love here, they've always told us that's an acceleration of God's work. Mm. And um, I can witness that. I've seen in the last few days I've seen students who have just reclaimed their faith and it's as if they've they've matured spiritually matured wow. 20 years in a couple wow. of days and that's that's powerful and seeing boldness come upon them to testify to what what God is doing in their life boldness like you see in the book of Acts just wanting to go out to other universities to testify yeah. and that's such a powerful thing it's just a, a melting pot and we need this uh, to pop up all over, not just the U.S., world, because the yeah. time is coming short. Revelations right. talks about that. His, his time is running out, yeah. and he doesn't even hide anymore. Yeah. The devil doesn't even hide, yeah. and so it's going to take brave souls. The Bible says that I have not given you the spirit of fear, yep. but of power, of love, and a sound mind. One thing that's um, different this time around is obviously there is social media, and news of this is getting out there, which has its positives and negatives, yeah. but um, I believe God can really redeem social media in the right way, by seeing His kingdom work get out there and well I know my heart's desire is that it's not contained within the walls of this place, that we see this push out to the Jerusalems, to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends yeah. of the earth. Let's talk about that, what would that look like because I think everybody around here is asking the question what next and, and, and how does this because this was so organic and student-led and not manipulated at all, I think there's a lot of fear that just people trying to force something going forward. Like, what yeah. do you what do you see happening in your wildest dreams and hopes and prayers? Well, I I just um, I just hope that we remain humble with all of this. Um, it's no one's agenda except for the Lord's, and um, all of us that have laid witness to this can testify to this and. If my, when my word goes out, it does not come back empty, and we're just trusting in that. We yeah. don't. We need to steward it well. We need to steward it with responsibility, with humility, and utmost reverence for the Lord, and um, and we just step back and watch Him do His work, but enjoy being called to co-labor with Him in this.
to walk with him when he tells us to testify to wit of what we've witnessed, to share that and to see his see spirit move. Mm. I think there's just a hunger and there's a deep desire. I would say for those folks that come here, we love that. But the, the real question is, what happens after this? Yes. And how do we take an experience and take that into a church and into a community and into a school and yep. into a workplace and into these dark spaces, an earthquake site, yes. whatever it might be. Yes. Um, you know, there's a metaphor that I, I've used and that we've talked about in our leadership team of thinking of a fire and a fire is brightest when its flame is tallest, uh, but it's hottest when it's smoldering, when it's just embers. Mm. And so that's that idea of going out. So even though this might, people might say whenever, this is dying down, perhaps it's just getting at its hottest because people are going into these difficult yeah. spaces and being light at a time in our communities, in our state, in our country, in our world, there's just a lot of difficult things and there's a lot of polarization and politicization of things. And if this can be this kind of salt and light, neighbor edifying, God glorifying thing, oh, I'm so thankful that we get to play a little part in that. Mm. What's up everybody, we've been at Asbury all day today hearing about what the Lord has been doing. And just as we've been here, I just want to encourage you, if you are a part of Gen Z, if you are on a college campus, or if you're just in any generation in the church, as we've been here today, the thing that the Lord, I just feel like has been impressing on my spirit today as we've been here, is that this is not the time for us to go, man, what's happening at Asbury, great for them. Or, man, that's, that's awesome. If God wants to maybe do it where I'm at, you know, if he decides to do that, that's great, but I'll leave that up to him. But I feel like the Lord is calling us in this moment to cry out to God and to go, Lord, would you move in my city? Would you move in our nation? Lord, would you not just do it at Asbury, but would you do it in our nation? And the, the passage of scripture that's been coming to my mind over and over today is in Mark chapter 10. When Jesus is walking through the city of Jericho and there's a blind man and he hears that Jesus has come to where he lives. And he's there and he hears that Jesus is getting ready to walk by. And he begins to cry out to Jesus going, Lord Jesus, he goes, do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. And the people that are standing around him are going, hey, you're being too loud. You're being too obnoxious. You're too, uh, you know, you're too hungry. Like, calm down. And it says when they say that to him, it said that the man began to cry out all the louder, Lord Jesus, do not pass me by. And finally, Jesus hears his cry, and he calls for the man to come to him, and he heals the man of his blindness. What I believe God is calling us to do is to cry out in such a way of going, Lord, do not pass us by that this is not going to be the time in our generation where we're going, man, we had an opportunity to see God sweep our nation, to see God sweep our generation. And we didn't capitalize on it. We didn't go, Lord Jesus, don't pass us by. So even just, I want to pray. If you're watching this, I just want to pray right now. And if you would pray with me, just all over our nation, all over our generation, that we would pray. And so, Lord Jesus, we, we pray. We pray that you would send revival to our nation. Lord Jesus, do not pass us by. Lord, we've prayed for this. We've believed for this. We've cried out for this. And Lord, for those of us who are going, man, I see how hungry people are for God and I'm not there. God, I pray you'd just put even a prayer in our hearts to go, I'm not hungry, but God, I want to be. And God, that you would answer that prayer. And Lord Jesus, you would sweep our nation. You would send revival. Lord, we, we would not miss out. As you said in Isaiah, Lord, you, you indicted the nation of Israel because you said there is no one who stirs up their soul to lay hold of God. 
And God, we pray that that would not be true in our day, but that you would find a whole generation in America that would stir up their souls to say, this is not the time to sit back. This is not the time to go. If God wants to move, he'll move, but to go, Lord Jesus, we're going to press in until you move. So Jesus, we ask for revival right now in our nation. Jesus, that you would move, that you would have your way, that you would be glorified. Lord, that our generation would begin to turn to Jesus by the masses. We pray that you would do it. And you would receive all the glory and the honor and the praise because we love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, don't pass us by. Don't pass us by. There's been this question haunting me. It came from a dream I had back in April. What if Jesus came back in 10 years? That is not an announcement. That is just what I dreamed. And it's changed me because what if we don't have long? How would we live? What would we do differently? And there is an urgency I am watching come alive in Gen Z right now. And, and I know many of you watching are Gen Z and many of you watching are, are 75 or older or maybe you're 45 and you are just still thinking, did he pass us by? And I would just say this, don't, don't go to Kentucky. I mean, some of you will and that's great. I, I, I think it was one of the greatest moments of my life to experience it, but not because of Asbury, because I was in God's presence. And that is available to all of us all the time. And let me tell you just the, just the three things that I see consistently when you see revival. You see prayer, you see worship, and then the last one, and everybody isn't very comfortable with this one, but this is the one that it all hinges on. This is the one where everything turned loose in, in Asbury. It's repentance. It would just be a really long worship service if people's lives weren't changed. It would just be a really long worship service that is never ending. And, and yet, up front at the altar, every minute that we were there for almost 24 hours, the whole altar was, was full of people praying and confessing sin, and no one was alone. There were always two or three of them gathered around someone praying. And guys, this is the picture that, that I want to haunt you, not, not the amount of time that this goes. I don't know when it'll end. But those three people gathered up praying at the altar. And, and confessing sin. Because right now, we have gotten numb to our sin. And, and I watch it in my friend Luke, this fire that burns in him for holiness. And, and, and you know, I, I, see, I see that that has turned things at Asbury. And so I'm going to say something really bold right now. I want you to pray from this. We are going to ask you to go from here and to pray, to pray that God would not pass us by. But guys, prayer, worship, and repentance. If you want to see a move of God, get in your living rooms, in your worship services, in your churches, in your, on your campuses, get together with other people. It doesn't have to be a big group. It started with 15 of them. And pray. Pray for God to move, but do not stop there. Scripture says that if we would humble ourselves, the Lord is searching to and fro for hearts that are fully his, and he will move and he will heal our land. The part of our hearts being fully his is us repenting. And so tonight, I want you to call somebody. If you're watching this alone, I want you to call somebody, and I want you to say, I want God to move, and I want to pray, and I want to tell you this is what I've been struggling with because I don't think we have time for games. <laughs> we don't. I don't know if Jesus is coming back next year or in 2000, but I know that this moment matters. And I don't know if the history books will call what happened to Asbury a revival. I don't understand. Everybody has a different definition, but I know that fruit will come from that. I don't have to wait 20 years. I'm telling you, I already have seen fruit from this. Students coming up to me with tears in their eyes, telling me what they've confessed. And that can happen anywhere. That can happen wherever you are. So tonight, we're going to leave you with time to pray. And, and I hope that you'll do it. I hope wherever you are, you will get on your knees and you will beg God, God, do not pass us by because our hope and our prayer is that this spreads. And I'm not talking about an eternal worship service happening on earth forever in every church. I'm talking about 
places of worship coming to their knees and wanting God again. Wanting God again. Do you want God again? And are you willing to, to name the things that, that have held you captive? When I was there, a group of girls walked up there, a little Bible study that came, and they said, hey, will you pray for us? And, and I started praying, but immediately almost turned it to, back to them and said, I think we should just name the things we love more than God. What, what do you love more than God? What do you want more than God to move? Because that's, that's what he's waiting for, is for people whose hearts are fully his. And the way we get there is just to name it. What is it? So wherever you are, get on your knees. And I would challenge you tonight to, to call a friend and say, this is what I've been struggling with, and I want to see God move in my home. I want to see God move in my family. I want to see God move in my city. I want to see God move on my campus. And I don't want to be in the way of it. Would we all, God, get out of the way? Help us get out of the way. Help us. We want you not to pass us by. We want to see a movement of you in this day that, that is beyond anything we would ever ask or imagine. And we know that that happens, God, when we pray and when we are surrendered. So God, would you show us the sin in our hearts, show us the cynicism, show us the selfishness, show, show us the pride, show us the ways we've lived like we don't need you. God, show us the things we love more than you and want more than a movement of your spirit. God, help us watch you more. Wherever you are now, I'm not going to say amen. I want you to keep praying. Thanks for joining us. And I'm very, very, very hopeful. I'm hopeful that God through you, God through you in your places, will bring revival. And that God would, in his loving kindness, heal our land.